All right. Well, Milan, thank you so much for agreeing to uh, join me here today to kind of do a redo of our presentation on MUDs, WCIDs, and special districts. Uh, so just for those watching, my name is Catherine Romans. I'm the executive director of the Hill Country Alliance, um, and we are so grateful to have Milan Michalek here with us. He is a uh, a uh, board member of the Cow Creek Groundwater Conservation District in Kendall County and our personal go-to expert on MUDs and special district, especially as they relate to natural resources and water in the Texas Hill Country. So thank you, Milan, for being here. All right, I'm gonna share my screen, uh, make this full screen. So this was an event that we hosted in Blanco County that uh, focused specifically on a couple of new districts, um, one MUD and one WCID that are being proposed for Blanco County. Um, but really we're gonna be talking about a broad overview of you know, what are MUDs, WCIDs, and special districts? Why do they matter? Um, and what can we as residents of the Hill Country and community members do to bring forward the positives of these special districts and minimize the negative uh, consequences? So this is um, a presentation that was part of a broader agenda um, for this MUD event we hosted on April 6th. So this video will be paired with um, the recording that we did of that entire event. Uh, but we're really interested in uh, just having Milan walk through his PowerPoint presentation and give us a good overview of these um, issues. And so Milan, with that, I'll give it to you to take over. Well, thank you very much, Catherine. I appreciate the opportunity to revisit this and uh, share share these ideas and observations uh, a little more clearly. The last time was a little more challenging, but nonetheless, uh, I want to be able to talk about uh, MUDs and WCIDs. Uh, we'll start uh, with an introduction. Uh, and proceed from there. Next chart, please. Uh, my personal introduction. Uh, my first name is Milan. Uh, I'm a logistics analyst. I work for the Department of the Air Force. I'm a aircraft uh, maintainer by trade. Uh, and I'm a board member and president of the Cow Creek Groundwater Conservation District in Kendall County. I'm also a uh, member of the San Antonio and uh, Guadalupe Bay and Basin Committee. So if you're interested in environmental flows, uh, I have exposure to that committee also. But fundamentally, I'm a citizen who's interested in, in MUDs and WCIDs and how they uh, impact uh, the Hill Country. Uh, what you're going to see and this presentation is all are all taken from public uh, information sources. Uh, it may take a while to find that information, but it is out there in the public domain. Uh, and I'm going to give you my personal views. I mentioned before I'm I'm an elected official and I, uh, of the Groundwater Conservation District, but uh, these are my personal views from my my experience uh, after about uh, 14 years of learning about these particular districts. Uh, next chart, please. I want to cover uh, five different areas. Uh, not in a lot of detail. Uh, this was a, a designed to be uh, uh, informative, uh, but it goes kind of quick. Uh, there's much more detail that can be brought out. But uh, for this presentation, I want to I want to tell you what a MUD and WCID is. Uh, I want to tell you how they're created. Uh, I'll focus a little bit on the public notice aspect, and then re, uh, share with you uh, my experience in Kendall County, and then of course uh, as a groundwater conservation guy, uh, my water concerns. Next chart, please. So, MUDs and WCDs are uh, a, is a, they're a category of special purpose government. Uh, the most common one you will hear of is an independent school district. Uh, emergency services districts, ESDs, are very popular in the Hill Country. And of course, uh, we have groundwater conservation districts uh, that stretch across a, a management area called groundwater management area number nine. Uh, which is uh, actually part of a priority groundwater management uh, FIGMA. Uh, I want to include a reference paper uh, to what these districts are and make the case up front that they're, they're considered a visible government. Uh, they don't hide per se, but the information that pertains to them may be difficult to locate. And uh, th this particular uh, document that I referenced here is from the, the Texas Senate, uh, and it's uh, fairly recent. Uh, but with a focus on special purpose districts to include all the different types of districts. Uh, they include everything from, like I said, school districts to groundwater con conservation districts down to something called the noxious weed control district, levy districts, 
any kind of district you can imagine uh, is in the category of special district. But this reference paper, uh, use Google and Digital Government, uh, Texas Senate, you'll find it very easy. Next chart, please. So why, why this focus on invisible government? Uh, years ago, when I first got interested in districts like this in, in Kendall County and the Vernon area, I found a wonderful article in the Dallas Morning News, and it was entitled Government by Developer. This is back when the 2001 timeframe was published. But periodically, I go back to it because this is the, these, these list the two concerns up front that many, many people have about these particular districts. Um, they have you know, specific boundaries. Uh, and, and these boundaries uh, exclude people around them uh, because the people in the boundaries are the ones that are going to pay for the district. They're the ones that uh, service the bonds in the form of taxes. So the infrastructure for water, sewer, roads can be built. And the bottom line is that the homeowners are expected to pay this in taxes. And not all homeowners know they're paying a mud tax, believe it or not. Uh, Secondly, the, uh, the reference here is to the Natural Resource Conservation Commission. And this, is, this is currently called the DCEQ, Texas, uh, Envir Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. And they oversee the operation of these districts. There's a catch there as well. Uh, they oversee the bond operation of the district. The day-to-day -day operations are turned over to a staff, a financial, financial representatives, a, a district manager, an engineer, uh, those type of things. So the DCEQs, uh, management uh, of a district is focused on the bonds. So again, wonderful uh, reference to get you orientated to, to these districts. Dallas Morning News, government by developer. Next chart, please. So exactly what is a MUD? Um, municipal Utility District uh, has, a, has a definition, uh, but to back up a moment, they have a purpose. And the purpose is to provide uh, you know, sewer infrastructures infrastructure services uh, that would come from water, uh, uh, associated wastewater, uh, and they, they're established uh, where service is not available. In other words, that's why they usually end up uh, in the ETJ or extraterritorial jurisdiction of a city uh, because there's, there are no services. And this is what they're trying to establish within those boundaries. Now, mud can also fund parks, street lighting, and some roads and fire prevention facilities. And I want to point out that the infrastructure within a mud is built in multiple phases. And each of the phase is funded by the developer, uh, who will in turn be reimbursed uh, for the sales tax exempt bonds. And as the phases are built out, more bonds are sold. The cycle continues uh, until the development is fully built out. And the perfect example uh, you can see it in front of you evolving is the Blanco County mud number one. Next chart. A very close cousin to the MUD is a Water Control and Improvement District, or WCID. Uh, comparable to MUDs, but they're limited to water control and improvements. Seems like a kind of a loose definition, but that's that's what the definition is by virtue of their purpose. Uh, they also have uh, a phase uh, built uh, development of infrastructure, and again, just like the MUD, uh, each phase is funded by the developer, who in turn gets reimbursed with tax exempt bonds property owners service these particular bonds. Uh, a good example of water control improvement district, how they've changed over the years, is uh, WCID number one in Kendall County. Now, if you've never been to Comfort, uh, Comfort's not a city. It's an unincorporated area of Kendall County. Uh, and the district was created in 1946 uh, to serve uh, water and wastewater. So what you see with a mud or WCID today is much different than the district like the WCID was created back in the 40s. It was just to provide water and sewer. And it's much different than it is today. Next chart, please. So who creates uh, MUDs and WCIDs? Uh, three ways that can be created. One with the, through the commissioner's court. Uh, majority of landowners would get together, sign a petition, and offer that to the county commissioner's court. Uh, the most popular way is special law at the legislature. Requires public notification, requires consent of the city, and within TCEQ by petition of the majority of landowners. They may be created anyway, but consent of the city is denied. Next chart. Steps into mud creation. Uh, muds are created uh, 
Well, very clearly on this chart, uh, you can see the steps that are involved. And uh, you know, the, the principal uh, partner in all of this, or actually the principal uh, overseer of the whole process, is the law firm. In this case, you'll see uh, Alan Boone Humphreys Robinson. And I want you to remember that particular name. You're going to see it later in this presentation. Next chart. And you also in your local news is the Matthews Ranch WCD number one. Uh, this is the public notification that you may or may not have seen in the Blanco County News. Uh, it's bigger than it really was in this particular chart. Well, it's small print, difficult to uh, define. Um, if you missed the paper, you wouldn't know this district was created. And actually, it's being created by one of the options through the legislature. Uh, legislate uh, whoever authors the bill has to uh, notify the public in a newspaper. Well, this is the notification. But if you look at all the details in it, it's very, very difficult to know exactly where this particular development is. Another issue about uh, transparency uh, and uh, why the district can be considered a visitor. Next chart. Uh, here's some more fidelity about the Matthews Ranch WCID number one. Uh, these were extracted from the uh, appraisal district, county appraisal district. And even here, it's very, very difficult to tell what is the location of this particular district. On the left-hand side of the chart, top left-hand corner in fine print is Johnson City. And in the bottom right-hand corner of that particular image uh, is uh, Blanco. So somewhere between Blanco and Johnson City. Next chart. Uh, I said earlier, I wanted to pay attention to Alan Boone, Humphreys, and Robinson. This coincidentally, or by design, was the firm that served the city of Blanco with its uh, petition. Now, they are the number one creator of buds in, uh, in, in the state. Uh, their, one of their founders uh, was essential, in, Mr. Allen was essential in developing the mud bond process. Uh, he had a hand in creating the Texas Water Development Board in 1985. Uh, extremely well respected in the whole process point was that the big people came to Blanco to create their district. Next chart, please. Here we are, uh, specific what we're talking about tonight, which is the mud number one for Blanco County. Uh, this is in the ETJ of the city of Blanco. There's a rundown on the infrastructure cost. Waterworks and wastewater, somewhere around $35 million. There's a figure for roads, just under 15 million, so approximately $50 million worth of infrastructure uh, that would be required to develop this uh, mud at, at full build out and, and reiterate uh, that $50 million will be paid by the people who live inside the district. Very dense, 305, 285 plus acres, more or less, uh, 1,094 residential lots and commercial lots, eight. Of course, you have some parking lots. So total number of lots at 1,105. And that's from a memo from an individual by Mark, Mark Sparrow from July 17, 2020. Next chart. This is an example of some of the experience I had in the Bernie area. This is uh, their WCID number three, which is known uh, popularly as uh, Esperance. And this is a list of the concessions that uh, the, the developer gave up and the city, uh, of course, applied to a development agreement so both of the, both entities uh, ended up with a win-win. Some of the some of the uh, features are a uh, developer contribution to help the city of Bernie construct a new uh, state-of-the-art wastewater treatment plant, which actually is a recycling center. Uh, and in this in this particular summary, uh, the district uh, agreed to to let to let their wastewater flow into this new recycling plant, and in return, after it's treated to a very high quality standard called type one uh, treatment of effluent. Uh, the water is pumped back up from purple pipes back to the subdivision. So drinking water is not used to irrigate lawns, gardens, and whatnot. Next chart. Uh, one of the best sources I found in the years, and I only found uh, this individual last year, her name is Amy Glenn. Her name is referenced on the bottom of this chart. And this, these are some of the disadvantages that she has uh, identified. And I would totally agree with everything she says here. Uh, you know, the 
fundamental uh, disagreement or agreement, depending on how you look at it, is the, the bullet in the center of the chart. Uh, where the proposal to create a district most often occurs after local government declines to alter subdivision development rules to accommodate new development. And you go from there. Uh, last bullet uh, mentions uh, districts are bypassing undermined rules that could be used to limit density. Uh, and our, our concern uh, over natural resources. Um, they're, they're specifically intended to, to ensure that the groundwater uh, can, be sustain, can be sustained uh, in sufficient quantity, but, but also uh, for recharge that could potentially be degraded by pollution. Next chart. This gives you an idea of uh, some of the massive growth from uh, on the groundwater conservation district. The image on the left-hand side of the chart uh, was created back in 1940. And they uh, works public administration effort inventoried all the wells in the county and identified 395. By 2020, the district uh, was advancing on a very, very, very intense uh, registration uh, program. And at that point in time, we had registered over 8,500 wells. Next chart. Uh, summarize. We've talked about uh, what is a MUD and WCID. We've discussed how they're created. We saw an example of a public notice. And I've given you a little bit of Kendall County experience. Uh, and also, uh, personally, my water concerns uh, based on groundwater availability, quantity, and quality. But the number one things we've learned uh, is to the public to pay attention to what is happening around them and pull back that veil of transparency. But in addition to that, uh, one thing I want to leave you with that uh, the best defense would be an offense. Uh, in other words, uh, cities or counties would be very wise to, uh, to invest in experts that understand these MUDs, the WCIDs, how they're created, how they're managed, how they evolve, all those details because they don't go away once they're created. It continues to come back to the government body, whether it's a city or the county, constant observation and revisiting of the development. Next chart. And there we go. I will give you our uh, website, Cow Creek Groundwater Conservation District. There's a plethora of information in there for, uh, for education purposes, but also uh, management of, of an aquifer like, like Trinity uh, through our rules and uh, management plan. That concludes my presentation. Awesome. Thank you so much, Milan. I so appreciate you. Uh, joining us. All right. Do you need to stand up and get your lights going? There you go. It seems like you're <laughs> coming through a little more clearly. Um, I wanted okay. to um, follow up your presentation with just one or two quick questions that came up on the night of our event, um, just so that we make sure to get your thoughts and reactions to those. Um, and then we'll let you go. Um, I will also say that the, your slides uh, will be posted to the Hill Country Alliance website. So I want to encourage folks who are watching this video um, who are interested in spending some more time with that material to visit um, hillcountryalliance.org. We will make sure we have a, a big feature on our home page where you can see uh, how to access those slides. So thank you so much, Milan, for that. Um, I guess you kind you of are. touched on this, but um, I want to hear kind of your your thoughts and number one recommendation. You kind of ended with this, but number one thoughts recommendations for community members, whether you're in the city of Blanco or in a, the rural portion of Blanco County, uh, looking at the this Matthews Ranch WCID, or somewhere else in the Hill Country that's looking at their first mud or WCID or special district coming in. Um, how community members can kind of get involved, learn more, um, and really have a positive influence on what these districts look like as they bring new development to our region. I would say the first thing uh, that I found over the years is to uh, difficult times, but as, as a member of the public, you have to participate. And uh, if I participated, uh, you may not go be able to go personally to each city council meeting, but City of Blanco, I've noticed, has a very good uh, collection of documents uh, that they record after a meeting or before when they publish an agenda. So 
of it as a citizen uh, seeking public information, first go to the uh, city's website like Blanco, you view the documents. When you have a question, contact one of the city council members. Uh, similarly, in the, in the county uh, of Blanco, um, the county commissioner, the county judge, uh, and uh, of course, uh, read. In, in this digital world, uh, you'd be amazing what, hap what would happen if you just Google a phrase uh, and the documents that are that pop up that are not necessarily related to what you're looking for, but will allow you to gain more knowledge. And the fundamental thing is, is you got to get smart as an individual and uh, won't be given to you information, uh, but you can certainly find it. Great, thank you. And I guess another question, you know, thinking about this mud that's proposed for just outside of Blanco County um, and the, the, you know, first glimpse of the development that's coming there looks like it's got, it's packing a lot into that 385 acres. You mentioned, you know, close to a thousand or just over a thousand homes, some commercial development, parking lots. So that's a, a big impact for 385 or so acres. I wonder if you could speak to, you know, what, what are some of the things that might be able to be negotiated in a development agreement with the city for this particular one? Are there ways that the city can influence, you know, density, number of site, home sites, um, conservation lands or park features? Um, what all can the city expect to kind of have a say on? Yes, to all of the above, and I'll refer back to uh, that chart I threw up there from the WCID, excuse me, Bernie's WCID number two, which is commonly called Esperanza. Uh, if you look at that, uh, that that summary chart in detail, you'll see just exactly like that. You'll see uh, acres to, uh, donated for a school. You will see open space. You will see a park trail system. Um, and uh, I, I touched on the reclaimed water system. Uh, so drinking water is not used outdoors, just indoor water for drinking, which goes back to the biggest thing to be concerned with and ask questions about, what's the water source? What is the source of the water? And this is, goes back to the, what can the city get from a developer? Um, this works both ways. The developer needs water and wastewater, and the city uh, could likely use uh, uh, revenue in the future. And the intent of these districts is to have the property annexed in the city one day. And you, it's usually 15 years down the road. And at that point, uh, it's very, very important to recognize that the investment in time and experts at the beginning will pay off that, that because then the city will inherit infrastructure that is comparable to the city's standard. High value infrastructure, which would be less for the taxpayers to maintain, which Somewhere down the road, this will be annexed to the city, and most taxpayers will be city tax. So fundamentally, uh, fundamental question, uh, but what's the source of the water? And secondly, how's it going to be treated? Because it has to be returned back to the environment. And whether it's land application, whether it's converted into irrigation water, uh, whether, uh, heaven forbid, it's you know, dumped directly into a stream or river uh, by permit, uh, that th those things can be worked out to everybody's advantage, I think. And they have. It's proven but it takes uh, experts to do the negotiating and uh, somebody that's in over the long haul. Thank you so much, Milan. Great, uh, great response and, and good food for thought, especially for Blanco as uh, they're uh, just starting this process uh, with the, the first mud ever for Blanco County. Um, I want to encourage folks who are watching this video to watch the full recording from the April 6th event that was hosted by the Hill Country Alliance and uh, Protect Our Blanco. Uh, we so appreciate your time again, Milan. And again, for those watching, I encourage you to visit hillcountryalliance.org to access uh, this PowerPoint presentation, the full recording of the event, and of course we also have an issue paper that is a specific kind of introduction to MUDs, WCIDs, and special districts. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, we appreciate it. Thank you very much for giving me the time. Have a good afternoon.